on the web browser Google a list of their top 10 most asked questions in 2018 from number 10 up to the number one question. Number 10, how does he like me? Or no, does he like me? 74,000 times Google was asked that question. Number nine, a tie at 74,000, can dogs eat apples? At number eight, why is the sky blue? 165,000 times Google was asked. Are Jordan's Nike? Are Jordan's Nike? 450,000 times that question was asked. Is water wet? Also was asked 450,000 times. Question number five, uh, the fifth most asked question on Google in 2018, who is the richest man in the world? And that was asked 673,000 times. How to screenshot on Mac? 1,500,000 times. Number three, what is my IP address? And that was asked 1,830,000 thousand times and the top two where's my refund so that would have been a a tax question and that mostly happened out of the u.s but that was asked four million ninety thousand times last year and the top question on google for 2018 was when are the nba playoffs asked five million times well, the top two, the NBA playoffs and the tax question, where is my refund? They're seasonal in nature and based on large annual events. But the rest, however, are constant throughout the year. And in the world of real estate, we also see a pattern of most commonly asked questions. And this morning, we'll take on many of these questions because this is Reality Realty on Northumberland 89.7 FM and I'm Dale Bryant, a real estate broker with Royal LePage Pro Alliance Realty Brokerage and at this time each week we take on, talk about and interview guests on all things real estate with a direct focus on Northumberland County and the communities within it. With me this morning to review some of the most commonly asked questions in real estate and mortgage financing is my better half and mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Centers Alliance, Carol Ann Bryant. And Carol Ann, thanks for joining me again this morning. You're welcome. It's good to be here again. Yeah, well, you, you saved the day here. We, we weren't really supposed to be here today, but uh, last minute our plans changed and uh, thank you for being there for and me. you called in reinforcements. And I called in my favorite reinforcement. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, what do you think of those questions that I, you know, top 10 questions? Any, any of those, qu were you listening first? I was listening, okay. of course. <laughs> what, what did you think of those questions? Um, well, I'm thinking number seven is actually our Jordan's Nike, not Nike. Yeah, Nike. Yeah, I said Nike. Nike. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> kind of changes the whole, <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> a little bit. Um, now you're regretting asking me to be on. No, I'm not. not. Um, you, make yeah. me, you make me better. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'm surprised about number one, but I wouldn't have thought that would be number one. Number one is uh, when are the NBA playoffs? Yeah. Uh, I have definitely Googled number four, how to screenshot on my Mac um, quite a few times because I seem to forget that. Um, oh, so you're, you're in there for in there. screenshot yeah, on one, the Mac. Yeah, that one. Uh, Sh uh, shift command four. Yeah. Shift command four, and then you can uh, make the size of your uh, screenshot whatever you want. Yeah. So... Um, it's interesting to see what people think. All right. Isn't well, it? Yeah. And now I'm absolutely. interested to How see. How about what, number 10? What? Number 10. Does he, does like, he me? like me? How uh, does Google know who you are and who he is? No, no. It, it's, it's ways to d find out whether somebody likes you. That's, that's, so you would read an article on that. And so somebody so you would. Google that question and then you would find articles that would say, this is how you can tell if, if he likes you. Oh, I am so out of touch. 
maybe we should stick to the real estate question. Yeah, let's then. let's let's focus back. Okay. Let's focus back on what I actually understand, <laughs> and that's real estate. So we're going to look at most commonly um, asked real estate questions, and and at first, at first, this was just something to really save the day on a on a day that. I wasn't going to be here and, and we were going to do a repeat. And then all of a sudden you came to the rescue and, and I thought this will be good. But with my list mm -hmm. of most commonly asked questions, I thought I'll get a top 10. And, but the more I thought about it was the more I kept thinking about extra questions that I'm commonly ask asked you. and sure. other realtors are asked. So, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're this week and next week doing this now. Two oh. parts. You're roping me in for a second show, are yeah, you? Yeah. Well, how about your questions? Well, Were they building, or calendar. or are you just a one a one show wonder here? No, no, I have questions. Yeah, that you're yeah. commonly asked. I have questions, but I do admit now I do have to Google can dogs eat apples because now I'm curious. We don't have a dog. I'm just curious. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, commonly asked questions, yes. and and before we get into this. Let's take a look at Snapshot. And Let's sna do it. Yeah, and Snapshot is a look at the residential real estate market right here in Northumberland County. There have been 130 single-family residential sales over the past month, and that is up nine sales since last week's report. It leaves, leaves us with an increasing inventory of 527 residential listings for sale, and if people are paying attention to the stats at all, we haven't, I mean, last week I had a number of 508 uh, inventory. We're just never in the five. So big, big inventory for us right now. Mm -hmm. Average selling price of successful sales over the past year has risen again by about $1,000 over last week's report. And it now is at $439,000 for the average sale price of res a residential home in our community. During the past year, people have received on average approximately 98% of their list price in a market time of 47 days. And we're still in the seller's market with an absorption rate at approximately 25% based on the past month's sales trend, meaning we have a residential home inventory that can satisfy approximately 4.1 months of sales at the rate homes have been selling. And as always, I research these Northumberland County statistics and calculate the absorption rate using information from CoreLogic's matrix system. And matrix is the local realtor component of the MLS system. So if you're thinking of buying or selling a home, you'll want this information to be area specific specific to the property type you're dealing with and the price band it's in. So what do you do? You talk to your local realtor who can help you understand this information and make it work for you. Carol Ann, mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. holding What's going steady. on? Holding steady. What holding is steady? steady. Uh, you can still get a five-year fixed as low as 2.59%. Uh, there's no change in the discount off of the variable rate, but still a discount of minus uh, 1.1 and uh, prime is three still 3.95 percent so that would make your interest rate 2.85 percent so no, and, no changes and as always conditions, conditions apply conditions to do for apply. these rates yeah yeah and so those mortgage rates each and every week come to us from carol ann bryant mortgage broker with dominion lending centers alliance and thanks for always supplying those for me you're welcome good stuff My bill is in the mail your bill <laughs> good um yeah i wonder if that's a google question <laughs> <laughs> is my, what is my bill is, in is the my mail? bill in the mail <laughs> or, or what do i do when somebody says my bill is in the mail um I'd just like to remind everyone that the views and opinions expressed on Reality Realty or any of the articles presented do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the station, of the Northumberland Hills Association of Realtors, of any other realtor or real estate brokerage. Simply, our views and our opinions at this time. And sometimes we change our opinions, right? Yeah. If proven wrong, I, I don't know. Has that ever happened, though? That, that, we've been, that we've been proven wrong? Oh. 
I believe I have once or twice. Yeah, I have if once you ask or twice her children. Too. <laughs> Lots of times, yeah. Lots of times. <laughs> All right. So why don't I, uh, I'm going to start with okay. a question. And is I this think the number one this last question that you're going to do. This is a biggie. Uh, okay. This is a biggie, and I'm asked it all the time in different in different settings, forums, um, and and I know all realtors are, and that is how much is my home worth? Yes. Everybody wants to know, right? Sure. We want to know what our home is worth. Sure. No. No thoughts about moving, but you always like to know what your biggest investment is worth, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I get, I get asked this question, how much is my home worth? I get asked this question, maybe we're just in a social setting, and somebody might say, you know, they know I'm a realtor. They say, ah, oh, I've got to get you bought over sometime and tell me how much my home is worth. And... Uh, uh, but I here's a here's a situation where I'm asked this question a lot, and it's really pretty standard for a realtor to be asked this question, and that is on an appointment to somebody's home. Mm -hmm. They're thinking of selling their home, and they want to. Uh, they they might just be thinking of you, or maybe they're going to talk to a couple realtors, and. One of the one of the biggest questions is, how much is my home worth? And it's more than just one of the biggest questions. I personally think it's their biggest question. Mm -hmm. It's and and really and truly, how much your home is worth. I don't see that as a good interview question. I oh. mean, because because the uh, the realtor isn't determining it. You know, they're not the final say in, in what you list your home at. Uh, you are. You, the seller, are. I mean, questions about how the realtor markets a home. Uh, what are some of the What are some of the ways that the com uh, communication will happen between realtor and and the seller? Um, is the seller on their own or part of a team? And how, how easy or difficult is it to get a hold of the realtor? Um, different, like marketing, different platforms. Um, how, how busy are they? Uh, you know, not, not that you need the top award winner, but are you busy enough that you're, you know, you're keeping up mm -hmm. with, with, the, um, with the market and, and, aware of the uh, the trends and things going on in real estate and you are a uh you know seasoned negotiator and and such but how much is my house worth i mean that to me that only matters if the realtor is considering buying your home because that that's like how much will you pay me for my house now now that's important well, it's a question that has to be asked if their house is going to be listed. Y yeah, absolutely. But it's a relevant question. Oh, it's 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 huge because uh, biggest part of marketing. I mean, the the realtor can say, "I market on the Toronto Real Estate Board as well as the local board. I market on this platform on the internet. I market on this in this medium and that medium." But if you have the price wrong. Right. Uh, it, you know, it's it's really all for naught. Um, the price is, is possibly the biggest marketing, you know, thing to get over and get right. But what I'm saying is that can be that can be um, figured out by any realtor after after you decide to work with them or not. Oh, okay, so you're saying. First, you should establish if that's the realtor you want to work with. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, once you establish the realtor you're you're going to work with, now work together on price. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, and 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 here's just going to go on on this one a little bit because there's so much to it. So what happens is a realtor is in a house, right? And 
it's the first time we've seen the house and we're asked, so what is this worth? And a lot of realtors will say, listen, let me, uh, let me look through the house, take some pictures, go back to my office, back to my computer, and give me, give me a day, give me a couple days, whatever, however busy mm-hmm. the realtor is, and let me, let me figure it out, let me calculate it. But so many people say they just want to press you for, well, just off the cuff, what would you say? And, and to me, that's dangerous. It's so easy to be inaccurate. Yeah. I mean, you, you can, if you've been doing it long enough, you can kind of, like in your head, I'm sure you're thinking, well, we're probably in the 400s or we're in the 700s. But to pinpoint, like you, you can, you've been doing it mm-hmm. long enough, you can tell if a, a house is going to be over 500000 in that price range. Like you can have a broad range. But to pinpoint it requires some investigation and some homework. And if, if a realtor came into our house and, and gave us a number and then came back later and they, and, and they said, oh, actually, I've done some, and they gave us a number and we found it acceptable. And then yeah. they come back later after they do some calculating and it's yeah. 10000 less. Yeah. Or if it's twenty or 30000 yeah. less, we'd be like, Hold on a minute. Yeah. What's, what's this funny business going yeah. on here? Because you said that number earlier on when you were here. And, and we, we basically agree with you. And now you're coming back and you're looking. Right. Because, I, I mean, as you're standing there as a realtor, do you, did you take a good look at the roof? That, that's an expensive item to have mm-hmm. done. Is, are the shingles on their last legs? Because that could be a, an eight, a $12,000 uh you know, job Adjustment. to, to oh. be done. Yeah. How old, how old is a uh, furnace and the air conditioning? Yeah. How about this? You walk into a house and, and you have a sense of how, how large or small the home is, mm-hmm. but you don't have accurate figures. And, and what if you just, you know, you're eyeing a house and you say, ah, I think this is about a uh, 1200 square foot, this main floor, but maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're missing something that's, that says as small as a 10 by 12 room on the main floor. So, you, you know, you just, I mean, you're eyeballing it. You haven't pulled out a tape measure or anything. And so you miss maybe about a 10 by 12. Well, that 10 by 12 doubles upstairs. So now you got 120 square, uh, 140 square feet of space that maybe you misjudged. Right. And, and what if you give that 140 s- square feet of space a value of only $80 a square foot? And if anybody's if anybody's ever had a house built lately or priced a home built, eighty dollars a square foot doesn't buy you anything. So if you give that two hundred and forty thousand uh two hundred and forty square feet, eighty dollars a square foot, you're you've just increased the uh missed the price by over nineteen thousand mm-hmm. just by missing that small space. Right. And and that's 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 that some pretty modest Right. Conservative numbers. And so anyways, biggest question, um, how much is my house worth? And uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a question that needs some thought. And calculating. So I'd recommend people don't just reach into their magic price hat and pull out a number. And it's not always as simple as them saying, well, the house on the street a few doors down, which is very similar to ours, sold for X amount of dollars. So we, you, it's not even that simple because was that house actually similar? Did it have a finished basement and your house doesn't? Like, it's, it, is, it is a process to come up with that number. Yeah, you have no idea what the people have done to their home for modifications. Um, there's, there's homes that have the exact same curb uh like uh it looks like the exact same house from the curb right but when it got built uh people opted for additional building out the back that you may Mm -hmm. not know of or maybe people have put it up since it was built but they're not all the same square footage even though at the curb it appears it might look that way yeah so it's not a it's not a simple black and white no answer to that so anyways my big that that was my biggest question okay. and Carolyn, we're going to get into yours but 
I took yeah. so much time on my biggest question. Okay. We're, we're going to take a break. Okay. And we're, when we're going to get back, um, I promise I'll give you some air time. Okay. So, folks, you've been listening to Reality Realty, Northumberland, 89.7 FM's local real estate talk. Join us after this break, and we are going to continue talking about the most commonly asked questions in real estate and mortgage financing. These days, it can be a puzzle where you can turn to to get the news from your own backyard. This is Cecilia Naismith, and I'm helping you find out. Northumberland 89.7 takes pride in being your truly local news source. Tune in for the scoop on what's happening near you, on the air, and in more detail on our website. We report the stories, and we also go beyond the headlines and talk with the people who make things happen. You deserve to be well informed. Let Northumberland 89.7 be your go-to source for local information. The Port Hope and District Chamber of Commerce is now accepting registrations for their 18th annual golf tournament on September 12th. The day will be filled with fun and games while 18 holes are played at Ashbrook. Lunch, steak dinner, and a round on the links are sure to make for a great day of networking while supporting the voice of business. Call 905-885-5519 or visit porthopechamber.com. Celebrating our fifth year of service to Northumberland County, we're Northumberland 89.7, truly local radio. Hi, I'm Uvi Meyer, host of Classic Country, showcasing the hits of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Tune in and listen to me every Wednesday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. and hear all your favorite songs and artists from that era. From Hank Williams and Patsy Cline to Johnny Cash and Tammy Wynette, learn about the lives of the artists, the stories behind the songs, and a little trivia of the times. That's Classic Country, every Wednesday evening, right here on Northumberland 89.7, truly local radio. Welcome back. This is Northumberland 87 FM's Reality Realty with Dale Bryant. And my co-host today is Carol Ann Bryant. Carol Ann is a mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Centers Alliance. And today we are looking at the most commonly asked questions in real estate and mortgage financing. And Carol Ann, I got some more interesting questions just to, you know, trivia stuff. Here, uh, according to Workopolis, mm -hmm. five most common interview questions ah. when you're going for a job interview. One, tell me about yourself. Pretty open. Not that scary, I think, right? Number two, are you, why are you interested in this job? Uh-huh. Yeah. The, uh, the real answer is I just need a job and I need, I need <laughs> some money, right? But let's see, let's see how full of beans this uh, uh, person is. Three, what would you say are your greatest strengths? Yeah. I think everybody's pretty much prepared to say that one. Uh -huh. And another one, another one that when I first heard it years and years and years ago, I thought would have tripped me up. But I mean, this is old news too. What do you think are your biggest weaknesses? Right. My my biggest way I just can't say no when people ask me to do something I just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And and the fifth one, where do you see yourself in five years? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be sick and tired of this job, but I won't have a choice, and I'll just keep coming in because I'll need the money still then, right? Okay. Hired. Hired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how many mm. interviews are are truly honest? So, Caroline, we're doing most frequently asked questions in, uh -huh. in real estate, mortgage financing. What do you got for us? This is the number one question I am asked, especially if somebody is just calling me up and I've never spoken to them before. What is your best rate? Wow. Money. Everything's about money. Mine was all about money. Yours is about yeah. money. So yeah. what is your best rate? I mean, good question, right? Yes, it's a very good question. Sadly, it's not something that can be, same as your question, it's not something that can be definitively answered at that moment. I can say, like I do with you with the rates, we have rates as low as, but the part that's not black and white is does that person actually qualify for that rate 
first of all, is this somebody who has less than 20% for a down payment? Mm -hmm. Then that, that rate ap applies. Is this somebody who has a really high credit score? Then that rate applies. Like there's so many variables now. Because the first one, you said if somebody has less than 20% down payment, yeah. Yeah. then the good rate applies. I know, I know. But if you have more than 20%, if you've saved more, if you've somehow built up equity to have yeah. more than 20% and you're willing to use it uh, down on your mortgage, yeah. you're saying what? They don't, they don't get that interest rate. Thanks to the government who changed the mortgage rules. So, so the thing is, no wonder you're asked that question so often. I mean, for the fact that it's, it's all about money and, and our, our ability to afford life. Right. But also, it isn't that clear. It's when, not when that you introduce clear. things like that. Uh, you know, when I first started doing this, this job, it was it was very clear. I only had to ask people, do you, you know, are you purchasing? Are you refinancing? There was only a couple of questions I had to ask. And I could quote a rate. Mm -hmm. Now, it's it's not that simple. You have to ask more questions. You have to actually see their credit bureau because some lenders only offer that rate if the person has a beacon score of 700 or higher mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> so, so a lot you to know consider. if you you think you have a good credit score but then when we actually check your credit bureau maybe you have a 650 beacon score well now that rate now that rate is not applicable to you with that lender there are lenders that have different criteria so it's really not a simple it's not a simple question. You might think it is. No. So people listening to the rates that I, I put out in Snapshot every week, right. um, you know, those are those are best rates. But, but saying that, mm -hmm. occasionally you'll even be able to do better on a rate, right? Yes, because, um, you know, I could, I could be at my office this afternoon and a lender sends out an email that they're, they're having a special on a, let's say someone... A buying a house and it's going to close in 30 days so that's called a quick close special and they'll offer maybe 2.49 if somebody is going to purchase and it's going to close before the end of September say like there'll, there'll be a mm -hmm. date and and that's called a quick close special and some lenders will off offer that special rate yeah um, so that's the other thing Two, I can quote a rate to somebody and then the very next day get an email from another lender who's offering a special. So now now I can have to call that person back up and say, well, now I have this rate. So unlike the bank where they tend to keep their rates the same for quite some time because I can deal with many different financial institutions, mm -hmm. my rates can fluctuate on a daily basis. Yeah. And would you say... So you, you, d you have the ability to deal with a number of lenders. Would you say most lenders are pretty tight and, and, and have the same rate or, or it with, with a few that are better or worse? Or would you just say they're all over the map? Uh, there's some lenders that tend to not jump at reducing their rates as quickly as other lenders. Definitely. So if rates go down, um, you could see the masses of lenders go down and, and then some, some lenders are, just... Some are a holdout. Holdout. Yeah. And, and does the opposite does the opposite hold true for when they go up? Do some hold out and, and stay low? Yes. They do? Yes. Wow. Yes. No, for long. No. But, but we have seen that. Mm -hmm. That they won't be so quick to jump up because they want to capture some more business for a couple of weeks. Yeah, and, and I guess it all depends on how much, um, in part, how much funds they have available. If they have a ton of mortgage funds available to do mortgages, then, then they're going to be more motivated to get those funds invested. If, yeah, yeah. If they're running lower, they, they're going to wait. They're going to wait for the higher return, right? Yes, or that pool of funds is 
is coming from a certain group of investors who are looking for a certain rate of return. So then mm -hmm. they can't change the rates. Yeah. Anything else to say on, on that question? Uh, what's, what's the best rate? I or what did you say? What, what, yeah, what's yeah, your best what's rate? Your best rate right? What's your lowest rate? Right. Yeah. You know, that kind of, yep. Yeah. No, I think we've pretty much covered okay. that. Okay. Well, how about this one here that I'm asked um, quite often? And, and actually, yeah, this, this once again, I can be asked this as much in a social setting as I can. How about every single time we're in a social setting, you get asked this question? What's the real estate market like right now? Yeah. Everywhere we go. You think it's every time? Yes. Even when we're traveling. If we're not in Canada, people will say, what's the real estate market like in Canada? You get asked that question almost every single time. Yeah. Well, and you know what? I really believe that's why this show is as popular as it is, because everybody's interested in real estate. Uh, you, we both know we go to a restaurant and we're sitting there and how often do, do you hear another table talking real estate? I mean, it's a lot. It's crazy. A lot. And, yeah. and, and, and sometimes, I mean, not that I'm listening into other tables because honey, I'm paying attention to you. Okay. Thank okay. you. But how many times do I overhear and, 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 yeah. and it's a loud table and, and, yeah. they, and they, and there's things they're saying that I think, oh my goodness, that's so wrong. I wish I could I go wish over. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wish I could just say, oh no, no, no. Excuse me. Yeah, um, but but yeah, I don't. So, it's true. It so is anyways, a, it is a popular topic of conversation. Yeah. So I yeah, I very often ask how the market is right now, and mm -hmm. once again, that's something that we uh, we cover on snapshot. Yeah, and so that's a good thing. You are often. Well, you are always able to answer people's yeah. question because you do these statistics every week. So you're very well aware of what's happening in the market in Northumberland County. And, and to me, it's important to do the stats because if, if I wasn't doing stats regularly, uh -huh. then somebody asks me, my answer is going to be based on how my own personal business is at this time. Right. I mean, not the, not not the, the broader market. industry at large. Yeah. And so... So it, it really does it really does help mm -hmm. and to to look at stats and, and analyze the stats for sure. And yeah. then naturally we're you know, it's something of concern when when I'm working with a buyer or working with a seller. And and it has a lot of value knowing your stats going into negotiations and and not just it feels like a buyer's market or a seller's market, but is it? And, mm -hmm. and by how much? Mm -hmm. Do we just have our toe in that market? Or are we so deep into that market that uh, we know one side has... The advantage. Yeah, yeah. Is, that the, uh, is that the driver's wheel? So, yeah, big, big question I'm asked. What does the market look like right now? Mm -hmm. What about you for uh, another question? Yeah, so I'm just looking at my list here. So that was And these are the these are the most commonly asked yeah, questions these are the most commonly in asked. in real yeah. estate and in home financing. Yeah. This is not a this is not a top like this is not a top one, but I do get asked this question a fair bit and that is um what documents do I have to provide to you? You know, everybody's concerned about privacy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to just hand over uh, stuff to people. Um, I mean, also, we're, we're talking about pretty sensitive stuff mm -hmm. when it comes to getting a mortgage. So your bank statements, your investment statements, your pay stub, your letter of employment, all those things. Highly personal, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, they're necessary. You can't obtain a mortgage without proving to that financial institution that you are asking to borrow hundreds of thousands of dollars. You have to prove to them that you have the capacity to pay that mortgage. And therefore, you have to provide the documents. Now, this is a big thing with bank statements. People 
say, well, I don't want them to see every single little thing I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Well, they're not really concerned about that. There's two things with bank statements. And the, you have to provide a bank statement if you are saying that your down payment is coming from your own resources. So bank statements or investment statements. Uh, so you have to provide proof that that's where the funds are coming from. The other thing that uh, banks will be looking at your bank statements for sometimes is um, if you've just recently started pension income, they'll want to see that going into your bank account um, because you don't have a, a T4A yet to, to provide proof for that. Um, maybe something to do with your with your job you you know your hours kind of fluctuate so maybe they want to see a couple of months history to see that that money's actually going steady. into your account yeah a steady so they, amount from your yeah, employer so they're looking yeah. at that the other thing that they're obligated to look for when it comes to purchasing a home uh is is there any money laundering going on uh and so they're looking for any unusual large deposits in or out of people's accounts. Um, and and people, you know, people don't think about that. They have money in different accounts and they just start moving it around because they know they're going to buy a house. Unfortunately, that causes problems because then if you've moved a large sum of money into your checking account from your savings account, now we also have to provide a three month history on that savings account. So um, they're not looking to see that you went to Tim Hortons that, that week. Like they're just looking for those particular things. And they have to, they by the underwriters that are looking at your application, they have to look at so many documents on a daily basis. They're not spending their time looking at every single little thing. They have key things that they're honing in on. And actually what I will do often is when I get bank statements is I will mark it up. Like I will circle. Here's where the, here's where the uh, OAS or CPP, here you go. It's right here. Here's, here's the, here's the pay going in here. Here's the large deposit um, coming from the savings account. I will, I will write that on the statements. So boom, it's right there for the underwriter to look at. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to go combing through. Yeah. So um, you just have to prepare yourself that you are going to have to provide sensitive documents in order to get hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the uh, interesting thing that you said there <clears throat> is, you know, looking at those bank statements and and they're, they're going to want to see, like, s- if there's some large money coming in and out and maybe you're doing it for the sole purpose of getting ready for a purchase of a mm-hmm. home and and uh, I think of it very much like you know the actual sale of your home if you're thinking in 2020 you're going to be moving you know that's yeah. the year for moving call up your realtor today and because maybe you're saying I'm going to do this and that to my house and uh, and I want to get it ready right and instead of going out and doing what you think you might need realtors work with buyers ev- every week and we know we know what buyers are going to like mm-hmm. and not like uh, talk to your realtor get them to come in and, and give you some advice on um, what to do to the house in- instead of spending money in places that you're not getting a return or missing places that you should have maybe focused on uh, your realtor can be a big help if you're thinking of that move in 2020 talk to your mortgage broker ahead of time so that uh, someone like yourself can say, okay, uh, between now and then, you might want to do this and this. Because it's just like, it, it's like that financial room of your house. You're, you're readying the financial mm-hmm. room of your house as well. Mm-hmm. Does that sound yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's good to talk in advance. Do you need to talk a year in advance to your mortgage professional? I'm not sure. Now, possibly if you've had some issues with your credit, absolutely you need to talk because maybe you think you've straightened some things away, but you haven't straightened them away to uh, the guidelines that a lender needs to see. Mm-hmm. So, yes. But, yeah, I think that's... But for bank statements... Um, 
they're going to ha- ask for at least three months, right? Do they uh, ever ask for more? They do, depending on... So as much as how many? Um, I, <clears throat> I've had to provide 12 months bank statements before. So then what are you saying? Never, don't, uh, maybe you don't yeah, need a year in yeah, advance. Yeah, that's, that's like, that's not common, 12 months. Okay, six months? Six is months, okay. yes, but more often it's 90 days. So, so, get... And, 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 uh... I don't know if that can lead into, can I lead into the one, uh, another question that I had? You know what that, that can lead into? Oh, a break. It can lead into a break okay. and then your question right after the break. All right, or, or not. Or, or yes. Okay. Why, why would we not do it? So I, I don't know what you're talking about, but let's do it. <laughs> so folks, you've been listening to Reality Realty on Northumberland 89.7 FM, local real estate talk. Join us after the break and Carol Ann and I will continue to talk about the lead-in question from Mm -hmm. this document question. We'll be right back. The Northumberland Hills Studio Tour is a free, self-guided tour of the arts on September 7th and 8th. The Artist Gala is an opportunity to have a sneak preview and connect with these talented artists that make Northumberland one of the most vibrant and diverse arts communities in Ontario. You're invited to the Coburg Community Centre to meet and mingle Friday, August the 23rd. Doors open at 5 p.m., Official opening at 7, concluding at 9.30 p.m. Cash bar and snacks available. See you there. Bonjour, mon nom est Nathalie. Je suis originaire de Drummondville, Québec. Northumberland est maintenant mon chez-moi. Et ceci est Northumberland 89.7, la vraie radio locale. Hello, my name is Nathalie. I'm from Drummondville, Quebec. Northern Berlin is now my home, and this is Northern Berlin 89.7, truly local radio. Welcome back. This is your local real estate forum, Northumberland 89.7 FM's Reality Realty with Dale Bryant and my co-host this morning is Carol Ann Bryant, and Carol Ann is my wife, and she is also a mortgage broker with the uh, Dominion Lending Centers Alliance, and which is in the Royal LePage at the at the mall. We don't yeah. often say that. No, it's yeah. The, your office is right out of my office, mm-hmm. and before we get into before the break, you were talking about one of the most commonly asked questions. Um, that being, uh, what, how many, what documents, yeah, do, I what have documents do I have to provide? And and you have a lead-in question from that, but I first. Okay. I first want to get into some, I got some little trivia questions oh, here okay. of, of most commonly asked questions. Okay. And, and these are really neat. And, and I'm going to, I'm only going to do four of them right now. These, and I'm going to, next week when we. You're very excited about this. Yeah, I am. <laughs> next week when we, when we do uh, the second uh, episode of this uh, most commonly asked questions, I'm going to read a couple more. Okay. But anyways, this comes from um, an August 27, 2016 Huffington Post article, and mm-hmm. it's titled 13 Questions that will change your life oh yeah good questions right possibly so yeah why didn't they go to 13 Mm. so the first question how do people see me differently than i see myself that's a question somebody wants to know this this is a question that will change your life so if you sit back and you analyze this question how do people see me differently than i see myself you might need help you mean might need help from family and friends who are <laughs> who are willing to be just brutally honest brutally honest okay um what whom this next question what or whom did i make better today what oh. or whom did i make better oh, today that's a good question yeah. to ask yourself number 3 am i being true to my values Yes, that's a good question. So I value this, I value that, but do I actually live that way? Mm-hmm. And and the fourth one I'm going to get into, and the other nine will have to be next week. Cliffhanger? I mean, this could be a show. Forget the real estate show. Maybe we, c- we could see if we can do a second show here at uh, the station. Sure, we have all sorts of time. Yeah, okay, never We're not mind. working full time. But I, I'm finding this, re- I find this really interesting, okay? okay? Uh if I achieved, the last question, if I achieved all my goals, how would I feel? Wow. Yeah. Pretty good questions, right? 
Second only to the most commonly asked questions in real estate and mortgage <laughs> financing, right? All right, so <coughs> Carol Ann, yeah, and, and I mean, that w- that'd be great to get into these questions, but we're doing mortgage <laughs> in real estate. What what was the lead-in you were thinking of before oh, the break? Because I was talking about bank statements and um, <coughs> made me think of another question where people would say, what is the difference uh, if I work with you versus the bank? So one of the things I will say to people is you may not have to provide your bank with as much documentation. Well, in one area, your bank statements, because they have access to your accounts. They already have them. However, if you have, (coughs) pardon me, if you deal with a bank, but then you have another, uh, you have accounts at another financial institution and mm-hmm. you've transferred money from that into that financial institution, th- they're still going to have to ask you for the tracking on that. They have to follow the same mm-hmm. anti money laundering and terrorist act that uh, every other financial institution has to. So, so maybe, maybe you won't have to provide a 90 day history of bank statements. If that's your only account you have and you're dealing with the that branch. Right. So yeah, and and and, and then for the other documents, is is that about it? You, you well you you actually you haven't mentioned um employment letter yet. Yeah, I did. Oh you did? Yeah. Employment letter. What in the world up. was I doing? I don't know. Do I have that glazed look? I think so. Yeah. So employment letter. Yeah. Uh, pay stub. Pay stubs. You need to provide proof of bank your down statements. payment. You have to provide ID. ID. Photo ID. Um, Which you'll need to provide to your realtor as well. And to your lawyer. Mm-hmm. So there's ID has to be provided to everybody. It's a very invasive process. It is a very it? invasive process. And, and um, you know, people might feel uncomfortable. I know I've dealt with people and I think... I can sense they feel uncomfortable showing me maybe their bank statements or something, but I can guarantee you that that stuff does not stick in my memory after (laughs) a file is closed. I see so many people's documents that I I just can't retain that all in my head. And there's no way around it. There is no way around it. Somebody has to review it. Well, I think about this. If a friend comes up to you and says, Hey, uh, c- could you lend me $200,000? You're not going to do that without knowing, do they have the capacity to pay it off? Yeah, am I just giving this away or is it really a And loan? are you just going to take their word for it? Yeah, I have a job. Yeah, I'm working. No, you're not. You have to prove it. You can't, you can't borrow that amount of money and not prove that mm-hmm. you have the capacity to repay it. Yeah, and it's that's just not going to happen. And that's what the lenders want to see. They just want to know that their investment is a good investment. Y- yeah, as anybody would, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's a question, Carol Ann, that I get asked uh, very often, and and all realtors would be asked this very often, and that is, what's the best time of year to sell my home? Yes. What do you think best time of year to sell a home is? Ooh, um, I'm going to say the, ooh, I want to say the spring market, Mm -hmm. but then I'm also conflicted because we also, uh, I also wonder about like right after the kids go back to school and people are maybe, you know, thinking about it again and, and, and and it has to happen before Christmas. And so that's kind of a interesting time too, but I, I think I'll stick with the spring markets. You know what? Wife of a realtor, you're, you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You're paying attention more, more attention than I, I was paying a moment ago. Yeah. And I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank in, you for that acknowledgement. In, yeah. So, you know what? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say the best time is when it's right for you. I was going to say that, but... You know, because we live in a world right now where things are 24-7. Um, 
you know, 352 days a year. Things are in full operation. Uh, the way we communicate online. Yeah. People can be looking at realtor.ca at 3 o'clock in the morning looking for houses. It's instant and always. Yeah. And so it matters less than it mattered at one time. Okay. But uh, so when your circumstances are right, then I think I think you should be really considering that that's the time. Saying that, there, there, there are, I would say there's a few months that, things do slow down considerably if yeah. you're if you're thinking a listing in december yeah now if you just have to then you have to because things sell yeah in december but do they slow down absolutely right and and when do they pick up again i mean people are looking one thing the weather gets worse mm-hmm. P- a lot of people are taking holidays and, and spending time with family in december yeah and and then January once again not always a good weather d- time for for driving around viewing homes or right. seeing homes or seeing property that's under snow mm-hmm. you don't you don't really see everything y- you need to see even roofs uh, what what shape is the roof in how many people have bought a home in the winter not knowing until the spring or until we've got a, a, a you know, a couple of weeks, two, three weeks of warm weather, mm-hmm. what the roof actually looked like to the home they just bought. Right. And, and we mentioned earlier, a roof can be an expensive thing to do. So January, uh, December, January, February, there's three months there that are um, maybe the, maybe Not the, ideal. maybe the slower months. Now, March, March, we can still have some bad weather, but, uh, you know, depending on the winter, our spring market can start in March, and then it leads me right to exactly what you said. Yes, spring market. That's the biggie. Uh, I don't know if this can put you on the spot or not, but... Put me on the spot. <laughs> did Did you ever think back, because um, when that spring market actually hit this year, because it didn't happen when we typically thought it was going to happen. It seemed to me like it just gradually... Like, sometimes you notice it... Just because I I live with you, uh, I can tell when the spring market hits because your phone is ringing, your emails are coming in, and it's like boom, we're in the spring market. I feel and like you don't this, see me, and I don't <laughs> see you. Yeah, I go from you being around the house a little bit more to you're gone. Um, I feel like this year it was a like a gradual build up more than yeah. boom, it happened. Yeah, you know what? It was a it was a wet and cool. Yeah. Um, spring, and I, I'm not sure that that's had everything to do with it, but because wet and wet and cool typically doesn't slow down the market. It's usually what slows it down is cold and Snow. icy. Yeah. Um, but it, it was it was a, a little slower um, at the beginning. So so I mean it's not an on off switch. Um, the spring market it it, it happens when. But you can anticipate it can happen as early as, as March and mm-hmm. and most likely for surely in April. And can it be sudden and can it be gradual? Yes. So that's a, that's a great time to sell. Another thing, too, if you're thinking of a listing, you know, over the last week or two and, and you're not in a hurry, I might say, hey, forget about August because everybody's trying to get those last few days of um summer holidays uh, yeah, before it's sc- not like the, the time where most people take their vacation is in august a lot of people do and even if they took it in july they might be thinking Having let's another. let's do a couple day trips in august so people aren't thinking so much of real Back estate right school, now they're thinking about yeah and so if if you're not in a super hurry and light your life isn't dictating you gotta put it up for sale now wait till september mm. and because that and and you were saying um, but uh, you were thinking you were thinking about then, and yeah. absolutely, I would say that's the second strongest market. And that one happens more predictably. Once the kids go back to school, it almost starts immediately then. Because mm. they're back to school, parents are in a routine again. Mm. You know, even if you don't have kids, your workplace tends to go back into Maybe a routine parents are again. parents thinking... I'm not going through another summer in this house with these children. We need mm-hmm. more space. Yeah. And, and, but winter, I mean, winter, 
there's and there's ways to make your home appealing. Like, do you have do you have a fireplace? Mm. Uh, if your home has a fireplace, you you know, just making sure the um, if it has a glass um, the door on it or whatever that it's all clean and it's inviting mm-hmm. and you have it going and and uh, yeah, so. You can make a homework for every season. Uh, maybe your rural, though. Here's another thing. Okay. Spring market is 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 the best market. But are you rural? And, and do you have a lot of bugs? Do you have ah. a lot of black flies and mosquitoes that there's a time during the spring mm-hmm. that, that if somebody just walks outside of your home by 10 feet, they're going to be attacked and have a bloody... You know, bloody face and or neck. You have walking trails around your house, and it's muddy, and yep. you can't. Yeah. Then true. spring, spring might not be as good, uh, but you know what? Um, best time for us to wrap up the show uh, is, is before the next show uh, starts. Okay. So, Caroline, we're all done for today. Thank all you. Right. Thank you for joining. We're gonna we're gonna go into part two next week, mm-hmm. and and we I, might be able uh, to do three parts we might to this even because do we didn't cover um, hardly yeah. any of. Our questions, did we? We did no, a few. We did it. We've, so we've gotten into a few. could be a three-parter. could be a three-parter. So, folks, if you have any questions or comments about today's show or for any real estate questions, feel free to contact me by emailing dale at dalebryant.ca. I am an active real estate broker with Royal LePage Pro Alliance Realty Brokerage. And don't forget to join Carol Ann and I next week next Thursday from 11 a.m. until 12 noon as we continue most commonly asked questions in real estate and mortgage financing and on Reality Realty, Northumberland 89.7 FM, truly local radio. Until next week, folks. Whatever kind of week you've just had, on Friday night, it's time to let that all go. Join me, Nathan Wisnicki, on The Night Shift, a show that brings you through Friday night into Saturday morning as we play music.